We're down here at Levi's getting ready, of course, for the Monday Night Affair, the Niners and the Jets. And we're here in the KMBR studio on Tasman Street uh, with our Niners Nightly, the fifth edition, the Friday edition. And we caught up today with Chris Conley inside the locker room. We're going to let you hear a little bit of that conversation right here. Um, Conley's a great, great, I think a really good interview. Um, and a guy's a really intelligent guy. Guy's been in the league a long time. Um, very interesting. Here's Chris Conley. We asked Niners to add him to the mix with here. The Niners- All right, we're in the Niner locker room on Niners Nightly with the Niners wide receiver Chris Conley and uh, the 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 national TV uh, last game of the week. Um, we got a Thursday game. We got a game tonight. We get games on Sunday. Is it tough to wait for that Monday night game at the beginning of the year? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Um, I think that there is a lot of anticipation. Guys in here have been working hard and they're ready to go and put that work to good use. But at the same time, you can't peak too soon. You've got to be patient. Uh, there's still more preparation to do. So yes and no. You're, you're a veteran, so you understand film study and watching your opponent. I'm sure you've studied the Jets. It's a great trio of corners, Sauce, DJ, um, um, the other guy, Carter the second really good players, maybe the best trio you'll face all year. What do they look like on film? What's, I guess, for those of us who haven't watched the film, when you watch it, what makes them special compared to some of the other groups of corners you'll see? Um, well, with sauce, size, size, uh, he's uh, got size, he's got length. Uh, he runs well and got good feet. Uh, really, all of them got good feet. All of them have good feet. They have good anticipation uh, for what you're going to do. You have to be very sound, solid. You can't give things away. Uh, if you tip something off, uh, they're going to drive. They're going to drive and they're going to break on that ball. So uh, discipline, route discipline, route depth, uh, no indicators. Uh, and then you got to run through the ball because they will play through the ball at their hands. Um, you know, it's a physical defense. I would imagine be, this is going to be a very physical game. You guys are a physical football team, but I think this the just this, this Jets team I think is one of the more physical teams in the league. Um, what do you think? You, it, it, you, when you look at them, are they a more physical team than some of the other teams in the league? Oh, I definitely think that they are physical. Um, you know, they they have defensive roots that are very similar to what we do here, um, and it's all predicated off running and hitting, setting a tone. Uh, and really limiting what an offense can do. And so uh, I think that they are physical. I think that one day is going to be a physical game. Um, you have to go in there and you have to set the tone. And you got to be able to respond when you get punched in the mouth. Now, Brandon held out and now he's back. And uh, I would imagine those first couple of days practicing, man, what's the first couple of days of camp like? Because, I mean, you, you stay in shape year round, but mm-hmm. day one of camp, day two of camp, that's kind of where he's at right now. Mm-hmm. What's that feeling like for you? Uh, it's uh, it's a lot. It's a lot of things going on. It's a whirlwind of information. Uh, it's wrinkles that that have gone in and things like that. But he's doing an exceptional job, uh, staying on top of those things, and he's working working hard. And I think he's I think he looks good. I think yeah. he looks really good. I think he's ready to go. Purdy, you're only a couple of lockers down from Purdy. He's entering his third year, and um, he, to me, he looked really good this summer. Uh, how has he progressed in your mind? You've, since you've been here for the last couple of years, what do you think of how he's progressed this summer? Oh, I love it. I love it. I think that uh, Brock has been the same person uh, that he's been since I met him, coming into this building, humble, uh, hard worker, uh, focused. Uh, those things are all still the same, but I think that there's a, a new level of comfort that's arising in him, comfortable not only uh, around his teammates and interacting with his teammates, but taking charge, being a leader, commanding the huddle, raising his voice when necessary, um, and uh, those are the things that you look for uh, around this time. Right? It's, you have to take ownership. That's what the quarterback position is, and I think that he's doing that more and more. Have you had conversations? You've got two young guys in your room that look up to you, I'm sure, and Cowing and Pearsall. Have you had a chance to have some one-on-one dialogue with them and you know just talk to them? I guess what the question I would have is what's the difference between going from the college game to the pro game, pro game and what could you advise them? Um, you know, just letting them know that there's limited opportunities out there. You know, on every NFL team, there's limited opportunities. Uh, it's just it's just less than in college, but even more so on a team like this when you have a guy like Debo Samuel, when you got a guy like Brandon Ayuk, you got a guy like Juwan ahead of you the opportunities are even fewer. And so you have to take advantage of those opportunities. And at the same time, you got to get mental reps because you might not get a single rep at some of these plays all week long. And when it comes to the game, they're going to call on you to go out there and make a play in a crunch time situation. So just getting them ready that the expectation is higher, Mm -hmm. even if it doesn't necessarily look like it on the practice field, it's still expected. That's interesting, actually. Uh, Just to follow up on that, the mental reps, are you talking about like when you're watching film at night? Are you talking about like when your other guys are running through the drills and you're standing there? 
where do you do those mental reps? So, I mean, throughout practice, throughout, throughout practice, practice, there's definitely, there's a pecking order. And so if they have a play in for, you know, a BA or a Debo, they're going to get the reps during the week, but you never know what's going to happen on Sunday. His shoelace might break. He might need to come out of the game for three plays and you're in there. Yeah. You never got to rep the play. You never had a throw on that route from Brock. And you have to know all the coaching points and the details that that guy went through during the week because you have to execute it just as well as he would. That's interesting. Hey, man, we'll let you go. But uh, Bay Area, you spent some time here in the Bay the last couple of years. Is there a spot you've been in the Bay in the last year or so since you've been here that you're like, man, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. Yeah, no, I uh, took my kids to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Nice. Uh, and they love it out there. That's a cool uh, aquarium. This was a, an awesome opportunity to take them around, let them, let them go see all the animals and lots of wows and yeah. lots of octopus and yeah yeah things like that so yeah no it's been it's been really cool nice one. for for me and my family out here we, we really love it and we enjoy it my wife is from napa so we've spent some time out here before but nice being out here longer uh has been great for us hey good luck this year have a great year thank you appreciate you chris conley stopping by on the crew show you know they're they they they're as far as they know what they're they know what the scheme is they know you know kind of you know what they all the routine um, and it's just, you see the young guys in the room are 23, 24. Um, and a lot of times they are really looking up to these veteran players. And so Chris Conley is a really, you know, kind of an underrated player. This guy came out of Georgia. He was a freaky athlete and it just, it, it, he didn't quite work out. You know, he's kind of bumped or, you know, went from team to team. He's been on a bunch of teams for a guy who's that kind of size, that kind of speed. Um, but man, what a great find he was for the 49ers last year. He made an incredible tackle in the Super Bowl uh, on the coverage unit and just looked really, really good. So um, I liked what I what I saw last year from Chris Conley, and I think it was pretty obvious this year that he really deserved uh, that 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 spot on the roster. He really deserved an opportunity to uh, you know to make this team, and he did. So good for him. And I expect him to be a significant contributor on special teams. And if they need him from scrimmage, um, you know, he can step in. If, if a IU goes down, this guy can play that X receiver um, and, and contribute from scrimmage. So it's like, you don't want to lean on him, but if you had to, you could. Um, I'm going to share the screen. A couple of sound bites that I want to share with you. One is from Chris Forster. This is Forster earlier today. We'll listen to this and we'll talk about it next. We get a chance to see uh, Brendel and Kinlaw pot potentially lock horns, and Kinlaw supposedly put on thirty pounds. Um, how? What kind of a challenge is that going to be for Jake to anchor against a guy like that? Great challenge. Uh, we get challenges every week, and Javon's another crazy, great guy, great player. Loved our time with him here. We really respect him and the job that he does. It's going to be a great challenge for whoever has to block the guy. He can be as dominant a defensive lineman as, as, as we see. And, and uh, from what we've heard, he's having a great camp and he's ready to go. So obviously we were, we got a, we got a great challenge ahead of us. Yeah. To me, that is one of the big questions um, in this particular game is can, can Jake Brendel block Javon Kinlaw? Now they, he, you know, Brendel's gone against Kinlaw in practice. Kinlaw's put on 30 pounds, 30 pounds since last year. Now he was lean and mean last year. So, um, but I mean, he still probably weighed about 315 pounds, 320, something like that. Uh, at least that's what he told me when I interviewed him. So now he's probably closer to 340, 350. Um, you know, and, and, you know, he, he's, you know, he's going to be fired up to play in this game. You know, he's just going to come full bore at Brendel with his power. You know, he doesn't have lots of pass rush moves, but he's got tremendous power and it's going to be a very difficult thing for the Niners to run in the a gaps on Monday night with Kinlaw sitting right in the middle. So um, that could be a, a major factor in this game. I mean, you've got Quinn and Williams, and then you've got, um, you know, you've got, you've got Kinlaw and, you know, Quinn is an incredible player in his own right. Um, in fact, let me, uh, let me, you will, we'll share the screen on this one as well. And you guys can uh, listen to, I asked Forrester a little bit about, about Quinn and, uh, because Quinton Williams is one of the dominant players in the sport right now. I mean, he's just a totally total monster player. A lot of people remember the Niners took Bosa second overall. Um, there was a lot of talk that they were going to take Quinton or should have taken Quinton. I asked uh, for Furster today a little bit about the the dominating Jets uh, defensive tackle. Uh, Quinton Williams, speaking of great players, is is you know 
there's a lot of big, strong guys, but he's obviously great. What what makes him so great? He's got a great – he's got a low center of gravity. He's got bigger. Our guys were laughing the other day. He's listed at 303 pounds. I don't think he's at 303 anymore. It might have been his his, uh, his combine weight. But uh, he is a load, and he plays with great center of gravity. He plays with great energy. He's got explosion in his body. So he's one of those guys. We listed a bunch of guys the other day as to where he would rank with, you know, and I'm not going to give you the ranking between, you know, the great defensive tackles that we face. We face a lot of them. Um, and he's just one of those real strong and explosive guys that you don't get on quick. If you don't, if you don't take care of your business, you're not recovering. He's too strong and too powerful a guy, and it makes it hard to recover. So you got to be on your, your, your business early to take care of him. If you have a chance to take care of him. Uh, yeah. Quentin Williams. <laughs> it's funny. That, yeah, we were joking about how he's uh, 300 pounds. It's like, no, he's not 300 pounds. He's like 300 and he might have been 300 pounds like five years ago. He's probably 315, 320, 330. Uh, Quinton Williams is a big boy, but you heard it. You heard it there from Furster. It's like you get beat by this guy. You don't get another opportunity. Um, you know, he, he, you can't recover. I mean, he's that quick. So he's a dominant force inside. And to me, this is where this game starts. Can, can the nine, can Banks and Brendel and the rookie Dominic Pooney stand up to Kinlaw and Quinnen Williams right in the middle of the defense? And if they can, uh, advantage 49ers. But if they can't, um, you know, this game's going to be a very difficult game if you have to run to the edges and you cannot run between the tackles. Uh, so that's something to watch. Um, I'm also going to let you see this question that I asked Brock Purdy earlier today. And, um, you know, the one thing about Brock, you can always tell he's watched a lot of film. He never, he's never like gives you the, 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 the cliche answer. He just never does. He always gives you kind of a answer that kind of shows that, um, that he's done work that he's, you know, that he's watched the film. Uh, here he is. I asked him about the corners for the Jets. Brock, this team has three really good corners. What do they look like on film when you watch them? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, I just feel like they have like a lot of experience and they have a good natural feel for the game and and um, sort of understanding like concepts that offenses are running and they're smart. And uh, obviously, they're very athletic. Um, you know, Sauce Gardner's got some great length. DJ Reed's really quick, smart, gritty, and um, so uh, for us, it's going to be a great challenge and. Um, anytime we're going to you know, push the ball outside the numbers or anything like that, it's just got to be smart and aware of, of those guys because they're really, really good corners. So, Yeah, the perimeter matchup in this game is going to be a huge one. I mean, you've got Ayuk and Debo and Jawan Jennings, and you've got maybe one of the best trio of corners going right now. Um, DJ Reed's super underrated. Sauce Gardner is a stud. I mean, he's probably as good as any corner in the game right now. He's, he's really a top-tier guy. Um, and, uh, Michael Carter, the second is a, it just signed a brand new deal. So they've, they've got three good corners and the Niners have three good receivers. And I think that matchup is really going to be something to watch on Monday night. Um, how do the Niners, you know, stand, how do the Niners receivers match up to Reed and Gardner and Carter to the second? Um, and to me that, that could be a big part of this game. And now, um, as we're sitting here, we've been talking Niners, all week long on KMBR at six from six to seven. And we're in our final five minutes of our final show of the week. And it has just come across here on X. Uh, this is a report that I'm reading live. Jets edge rusher Hassan Reddick is rumored to be reporting to his new team ahead of the game with the 49ers, according to Michael Lombardi, uh, who went on his show on Vissin Live and is reporting that. So there you go. Hassan Reddick, according to Michael Lombardi, um, is going to be there on Monday night. Now that's going to be interesting. He, you know, a lot of edge rushers don't need a lot of, they don't need a lot of practice time. A lot of these guys can just step right off the street and right into the fire. Um, and a guy like Reddick, who's a speed rusher, we'll see what he can do. But that's, that is going to be interesting to watch for sure. Um, on the Niner note, I don't think we're going to see Yatir Gross Matos or D Winters. They were both working on a side field today. I think it's a very high likelihood that neither goes. Uh, Christian McCaffrey said he is going to go in this game. So that will be something to watch. What does McCaffrey look like? I asked McCaffrey today about Jordan Mason. And he said, man, Mason's had a great summer. And there's no question. And even if McCaffrey can go, I'd like to see a lot more Mason this year. 
I'd like to see Shanahan use Mason more. As far as guys that were limited today at practice, and if you're limited on Friday, sometimes that means you're not going to go, but Aaron Banks is going to go. He's got the finger injury. He was limited. Garendo with the groin was limited. Uh, Hafanga with the knee. Jawan Jennings with the ankle. And CMC with the calf slash Achilles. Those were the guys that were limited today. But the big talk is Williams is going to go. Ayuk's going to go. CMC is going to go. Um, and as far as to, to, you know, on how much, um, the one thing, you know, Furster was asked a couple times today, will you use Jalen Moore uh, as a substitute to spell Trent Williams potentially throughout the game? And he's like, you know, he, he basically wasn't going to give away anything. He, you know, he, he's, he was non-committal to it. Um, but I, it sounds like it's something that very well could happen. You may see Jalen Moore for a series or two. Uh, coming up and then Nick Sorensen we talked to him today and you know the Niners the one thing about the Niners that's super exciting on defense is the secondary because they got so much talent back there and Sorensen indicated that Mooney Ward Demo Lenore they're going to be your starting outside corners in the base and Ward and Yadam are probably going to start outside in the nickel and Demo in in the nickel will be in the slot so that's the corner alignment that we expect to see uh, going into this game on Monday night. 